All right. First item. So it's about 6.07. I'm going to call the meeting to order. First item is to set a just agenda. I believe um, the one thing I know about is uh, um, Casey had been to a meeting about um, revolving loan funds and I think she wanted to provide an update or had an update through someone. Eric, you didn't hear this earlier, but Casey will join us at the uh, item two. So if we can just plug this in sometime after um, item two, that would be a good strategy. This is the Restart yeah. Vermont Main Street Loan and Grant Program. Yeah, let's do that as an item three. Do we have any other changes to the agenda? No. We have an item three already. Oh, sorry. Uh, so item four. Let's um, let's do it as item three and bump that three down to four, just because that way Casey won't have to hang in. Is that good? Yep. Anybody else have <laughs> any other changes or anything? Okay, so could we have a motion to uh, adjust the agenda to have an item to have item three be an update on a revolving loan fund um, through the state of Vermont and item four to be the previous item three, which is the emergency management plan. So moved. Second. Second. All right. Great. So we have a motion and a second. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 All right. All right, so just to roll call that, I've got the eyes or everyone. Mm -hmm. I, I, we need a roll call, I guess, if it's not unanimous. But so that's everybody. Um, so we have a new updated agenda. Next is approved minutes from last time, which was the second. Was it April second? Yeah. You have, are you moving to accept the minutes, Liz? No. Yeah. I, I was just finishing your sentence. Excellent. Um, any changes or anybody have anything for those minutes or we somebody want to make a motion to accept them as written? So moved. Lucian, you're speaking, but you're on mute. Second. Hang on. Wiz made, Wiz made the motion, I seconded. Yeah, so Wiz made a motion to approve them as written. Sherry seconded. Lucian is talking on mute, but I don't know if he was wanting to add. He can hear us, but we can't hear him. There you go. Yeah, no, I sent in some changes, but I never saw the updated thing to see if they got put in there. So assuming that that change was made, it's all good with me. Actually, uh, I'm not sure about updates, but. Casey's not here to be able to answer that. We can double check it. I don't know what we should do for procedure right now. Lucian, can you can give me a- Can we table a, this? <laughs> Sorry, table Lucian. this until Casey gets here and can answer the question? Definitely. Let's do that. Okay. All right. Next is, uh, would be communication from the audience. Um, given our format tonight, it's hard to have a, much of an audience, but um, Doug is here I'm from the Gazette. I don't know. I don't have anything to add. No, just Great. Um, all right, next town manager report. Sean Fielder, tell us what's been up in your office. Well, good evening to uh, everybody out there in TV land. Uh, we've had quite a few tasks and requests uh, that frankly, I don't think any of us had imagined uh, prior to COVID-19. So um, I would like to say thank you to all the town employees. And uh, I think they're doing a really nice job uh, adapting to the situation to the best of our ability. We are keeping our services going. Uh, I think everybody knows we've had some pretty significant change in things like uh, public visits and just generally operating. And you know, a lot is being done electronically these days. So I appreciate businesses and community members support and understanding. 
And we have been uh, doing pretty regular updates on the town websites for uh, just some of the information in regards to the logistics details. So you can get the information there. Have had um, um, ongoing um, communications with town clerk's office, you know, because of what we're into here uh, with Chief Cochran, with Tom, with other department employees. Um, and we're, uh, in some instances, it's every uh, couple hours, you know, we're into something that no one's had, you know, we're not sure, quite sure what the best process or procedure is, but I think we're adapting well and uh, keeping up. So uh, as an example, uh, you know, the thing that came up this week was uh, just a little bit of detail for municipal and what's considered essential operations. And what we're doing is we're honing in on those things that we feel are important and needed to, uh, we know we've had some significant checkups on operate on you know, business activities, regular uh, citizen activities, but we've got a number of things we have to keep going. So obviously as examples, our water and our wastewater system, maintenance to our roads because there still is travel that is going on. Um, there are some holds on various things that uh, I think everybody recognizes this. We're hitting our construction season and generally in Vermont, this is go time, but we're, we got to put a hold on things for a number of reasons because some of these services that we're relying on, those businesses can't come out. So, uh, you know, as an example, engineering services, we really can't have anything done in the field right now. So we're waiting for the stay at home to lift. We're, uh, you know, we're keeping, uh, we're keeping up with our tasks and we're adapting accordingly. Uh, I've been doing some regular updates with support from team members on uh, town website, as I've already mentioned, been consistently posting information to the front porch forum. I'm happy to announce that the uh, we've added a COVID-19 resource button right on the homepage of the website. Related to this, there are newly added buttons on the homepage. They are titled Hardwick Area COVID-19 and Hardwick Area Needs in Volunteer Form. A huge acknowledgement to a number of community volunteers that have been working behind the scenes to, uh, to basically get this program established and set up. Um, there's been a lot of hours put into uh, just getting this Hardwick Area support system established at the citizen level. And we got a lot of community members that are uh, putting time into this and it's going to be a good benefit to our community. So I would call attention and acknowledge uh, Lydia Parker, Helen Beattie, Jody Lou Smith, Kim Hartling Wells, Bethany Dunbar, Reeve Bassom, Katrina uh, Razanali, Jake Lester and Lisa Samet. They've all been really actively working on the Hardwick neighbor to neighbor uh, processes and procedures. So um, Hardwick residents uh, that have a mailbox in this next day or so, Everybody uh, who has a mailing address in Hardwick will be getting a postcard that's going to give additional details on this program. And um, an important aspect of this is that there's going to be a phone number that's listed. So it's not just a web-based platform. You're going to have an opportunity to call somebody if you want to offer and or if you need assistance. So it's something that's really valuable at this time. We know, uh, you know this is impacting a lot of people pretty significantly what we're into and the community's trying to help as best we can. So. Um, Again, thanks to everybody that's involved with that. The uh, some regular operations items uh, at town managers uh, at the town operations level. We had talked a while back about an adjustment on our uh, community justice center, and uh, we officially stepped out of the program as of yesterday, as of the fifteenth. And the administration and oversight of the program is now under the auspice of the community restorative just restorative justice center based in St. Johnsbury. We have updated our website. We're pros closing out our program. We're keeping communications with the St. Johnsbury site. We've noticed this at our uh, building. Uh, I think uh, key, a couple key pieces of information, the basic functions of the program are gonna be continuing for anybody that needs to have these services. It's not just Hardwick, but it's some of our surrounding communities that we've done this over the years and the Community uh, Restorative Center out of St. Jay is uh, you know, aware and knows this and will continue to work as an example with our citizen volunteers and with anybody that's potentially uh, needing the support of the program. Okay, uh, switching gears, I'm pleased to announce that the Yellow Barn Project uh, did recently receive a grant award from the Northeast Heritage Program, uh, Northeast Economy Heritage Program, excuse me, that grant award is in the amount of $80,000, so that's obviously pretty significant. 
we will have a positive announcement on our uh, economic development authority uh, big grant ask we're not in a position to release this information as of yet but i can say this it's going to be positive it's going to be something that's going to be valuable for the project but we can't do an official notice as of yet till we get some paperwork in order um, the broad oversight on the project right now is that with everything that's happening around us you would imagine that it's impacting another a number of aspects on this project as are happening in other business operations and um, generally the theme with the planning team as of right now is we're planning for a groundbreaking in the spring of 2021 so that's the uh, thing to note there we you know we, we have some hurdles to clear with what's happening economically uh, it's impacting a number of things and this just isn't about the yellow burn um, you know bringing it back to some other projects in town we're not sure how we proceed with things like our Lamoille Valley Rail Trail projects that those were already funded but we're a little bit on hold so obviously I think the key and the highlight point here is for a number of things we're in a little bit of a holding pattern till we learn more about what's going to be happening economically around us we're in a good position with the yellow burn project as these other ones but literally holding pattern so uh, that's just a couple things I wanted to note there we've had a couple things come up in this last week that we did not anticipate in, regard, in regards to capital repairs uh, as an example at the memorial building the elevator that was initially installed in 1996 we found out unfortunately we've got a valve failure it's a critical piece of equipment it impacts the operation of the elevator it's safe okay now we have a temporary certificate but an unexpected cost coming at us for sixteen thousand dollars Related to that, we anticipate having to do a roof on the public safety building uh, probably this summer. That's something we knew was in the pipeline in this uh, future, but uh, came up unexpectedly. We, we basically have a leak in an office space right now. So um, these things come up and uh, you know, we've done a good job as a community capital budgeting. So you know, it may be that we've got a little bit of an unanticipated item here, but it's something that we can handle. So I Excuse think me, we're in Sean. a decent position. Go ahead, Liz. Uh, the elevator, was that <clears throat> one six or six zero? One six, 16,000. One six. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, you know, I guess if you look at that, if you spread it over the life of the elevator, it's, it's okay, but we didn't think that, we didn't know that repair was gonna be coming at us. So these things come up, we'll adapt accordingly and uh, we'll get through. Let me offer a little bit on budget because I know everybody, you know, you're probably getting news about businesses and towns being significantly impacted with the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And we've been very clear, uh, excuse me, we've been very carefully reviewing our budget and uh, we've been, uh, Casey obviously in the financial manager's role and myself, our department heads, uh, close collaboration with the town clerk's office. Our third quarter is closing out right where it needs to close out in regards to uh, what we're seeing for expenses and what we're seeing for revenues, looking at our overall, just our general budget. I know later on we're going to get a detailed report from Casey where we stand. So I just want to project this with our third quarter, we're closing out, okay. We, uh, we all know this coming off the last meeting, we have to see how our property tax returns come. And just as a repeat on this, uh, we have to hold the line on the May 10th delivery date. And we did check in uh, with uh, legal advice. We reached out to the Vermont League of Cities and Towns about what our options were on this. Given the fact that we previously mailed the property tax bills in August of 2019, the only way we could have made a, an adjustment on this due date was if we would go ahead and hold a special town meeting and cast a vote to make an adjustment. Given the stay at home orders, the logistics of that would not work. And I will remind everybody, the Secretary of State's office gave us the advice, do not conduct any kind of a vote at this time until the stay at home is lifted. So we, in our hand, we were a bit handcuffed is the point. So what we're evaluating now, and we've already announced this, we're gonna be, we're trying to figure out what those options are for anybody that is gonna be facing a hardship situation. The town's been nice enough to offer contracts uh, for folks that have a hardship situation. We will offer that moving forward. What we're trying to get detail on right now, we're waiting for the league who is reaching out to the Vermont State Legislature to see if we can get a waiver on any penalties and late fees that would be kicking in if the due date is May 10, those penalties and fees kick in May 11th. 
the town, the select board is not in a legal position to waive those fees. So we're asking the league, uh, hey, can you guys please check in and can we get this adjustment put in place? Um, two other quick things here. Um, I, I've said we're asking, I'm gonna ask the select board if you would be willing to support you know, uh, this initiative. And um, I guess we, uh, Eric, I should have had you add this as a, an item. So maybe it comes up under new business, just a, a resolution of some type that supports this initiative that we seek the legislature waiving the fees and penalties. If we can just cover this under new business, I can push this onto the League of Cities and Towns. So you don't, yeah. sorry, Eric, go ahead. No, okay, I, think, so, I think that's a good idea. Ahead. I think we could, um, uh, I mean, we th I think we could do it now, right? I mean, it's your call. Would it? Uh, so I have two board. things. Let me let me just close yeah. my statement. So the other thing that's uh, going on. Uh, let me just say this: if you, as a community member, are in a position to pay your property tax bill and you can do that, please go forward and do that. If you're facing a hardship situation, then you're going to have some flexibility. What we're trying to figure out for our town operations, and again, the manager's office, uh, you know, the select board's gonna be evaluating this. I'm having constant communications with the clerk's office, Casey and Alberta and I are regularly talking about these issues. We can't predict what the return is gonna be, uh, you know, coming in. It, Casey will talk about this a little bit further on in the meeting. So that's the big unknown. You know, when I say we've closed out our third quarter, fine, we have, but obviously we have a pretty big return that would be coming May 10th. Bear in mind, we have a $2.3 million bill that we're obligated to pill, pay toward the elementary school in Hayes and Union. So it's imperative we get the majority of that property tax return. We just have to see what happens there. Then we know better where we lie. You know, come May 11 or 12, that's when we know, okay, where, where are we coming down? Now what's the reality of where we're at this time? Now we figure out what those options are. And for the good of the conversation, we're already talking at the operations level about, you know, we gotta be, we gotta be prepared to do some belt tightening and we gotta be prepared to adjust accordingly. So those are some key points that I just wanna mention for everybody. Um, go ahead. Did you, did you explain what that $2.3 million bill is? That's the, uh, the town's payment to the education system. That's how the process works. So, so we that recoup, happens, that happens annually. Yeah, that's an annual uh, payment. Okay, thanks. All right, so um, I let me see. Did I have anything else? Sorry, I'm dragging on, but just there's so much happening these days. I'm trying to hit some of the highlights. Um, hey, Sean, Sean, yeah, go ahead. Just to, to piggyback on, um, as you said, if for folks who who are set up to pay their property tax bill, they should go ahead. If if you think you're going to be in a hardship situation, you should contact the town clerk. Correct. Um, the okay, so uh, if you're in a hardship situation, the actual uh, yeah, you the actual connection is to email Amanda, uh, you know, in my office. So I want to just add one other level of detail that's a challenge right now. The uh, we have our property tax due on the 10th. Uh, please recognize the stay at home order is set through May 15th. So there's two things that are coming up here that we're trying to figure out how do we handle this, and we've sought out some legal advice. Uh, it is our understanding in a given payment cycle, there's as many as 100 or 125 of our customers that come in and pay with cash. We are asking everybody respectfully, please pay by check if you can. At this time, we're not in a position to receive um, credit cards. We're evaluating that right now. So, you know, the issue we get into is we don't want to have to be doing this interaction where we're busting the social distancing rules. And then additionally, we're having to handle cash and sorry, but cash is dirty. <laughs> that's, that's a fact, a matter of fact. So uh, that's can something that we're trying to orders? see. Say again, Wes. Can you accept postal orders? Say if you don't have a checking account, can you go to the post office and yeah. get a, uh, yeah. Does that serve the same thing as a check? Yeah, check or money order, check or money order that, you know, the challenge obviously is somebody would say, well, that's an extra cost on me. And, you know, we're trying to figure this out. Do we have some flexibility on this? So as a scenario, one of the things we talked about, the town manager's office makes a determination how the contract process works. So what I thought about uh, uh, this week was, well, look, we can just say to everybody, you're all set. We'll arrange for a contract with you once we get into the stay at home order time is lifted. The technical challenges, the penalties and the interest by state statute start May 11th. So 
if somebody says to us, no, I want to set up my contract on the 11th, if we don't do it on the 11th under the current state law, then it's an additional penalty for the individual. So there's this catch 22 that's going on. We're trying to sort it out to reduce further additional penalty for anybody that is facing a hardship situation. That's how I need to say it at this time. Sean, um, the question I have is, what is the barrier to getting people to pay by credit card or PayPal or something like that? It doesn't seem like that should be too insurmountable. No, I, that uh, is something that likely uh, would not be the huge hurdle, but we've literally gotten the feedback from some individuals that they're going to pay by cash. And technically, by state statute, we are obligated to receive a payment any way they want to make a payment. So uh, if, you know, here's the thing. Um, I don't want it to appear right now, like if you're going to pay with cash, that's a penalty situation. But unfortunately, because of the stay at home orders, uh, I don't want to put my town clerk, sorry, the town clerk or the assistant town clerk, or if I'm in there uh, sitting, you know, next to them, we've got to try to limit these interactions per the stay at home order, if that makes sense. So just leave it in a suitcase in the memorial building steps, basically. Well, so Doug, this is an interesting point because that's the other thing that's causing some significant angst right now. And I don't want to say any more on this right now. So I, I want to say, I want to say that um, I personally am not, well, I'm not in a, in favor of accepting credit cards if we're going to be hit with a 3% fee. I mean, one can imagine the majority, you know, or a large percentage of people paying with credit card and uh, that's a pretty big hit on our budget. Yep. I agree with you, Eric. Okay, so um, what I would, uh, just as a friendly reminder, if, if uh, those property taxpayers out there are able to process uh, via check, uh, send it in. If you could please do that, just plan to do it. We anticipate getting some additional legal guidance uh, from the league. So the specific ask on the resolution tonight um, for the select board would be uh, Vermont League of Cities and Towns, please reach out to the Vermont State Legislature and request a waiver on penalties and fees for anybody that misses the property tax deadline while the state of emergency is on. And, um, I lost track. There was another, there was another bullet point there and I've lost track of it. Forgive me. I'll think of it as I'm talking here or as you guys are uh, bringing up the resolution. Oh, this is the other key point. I'm sorry. I got it noted here. The, uh, the other thing that is uh, that the league is bringing forward and is talking about right now is in the event we do come up significantly short on our returns for our property taxes. Uh, what that would mean with the information as at hand is that we have to dig into our reserves or dig into our checkbook and that could be a pretty significant hit to the community. It could use up all of that reserve potentially. So the other aspect of this resolution is state of Vermont, please get yourselves in the position so that if this were to happen in the community, the state of Vermont will be the ones to cover the gap and not the town of Hardwick or other communities. Um, wasn't there, uh, isn't an effort already rolling on that, at least on that second front, Sean? I thought I read something from, uh, uh, one of the towns in Chittenden County. Colchester. Colchester. Yeah, Colchester, Colchester. Colchester wrote a letter to the league and asked the league to go ahead and advance this. Um, so I think if the town of Hardwick is behind this, we can just say, yeah, we're behind this and we think this is a good initiative, then I can relay that to the league. If it doesn't have to be in the form of a motion or resolution, that's your folks call. Well, I think what we could do is um, 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 if folks want to do this, we could do a motion to um, direct Sean to reach out to the league expressing our support of these two actions. Yeah, I'd be in favor of that. I move that we ask Sean to reach out to the league and support the movement to, to waive fees and penalties for late taxes. And just that, or do you want to also um, add the what bit about add the bit about supporting also support Colchester's um, effort to uh, have the state 
be responsible for education shortfalls resulting from the COVID-19? Yes, that too. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I'll second it. All right, any, so discussion on this? I just have one really quick clarifying question, Sean. You mentioned that the, there would be a grace period depending on the, um, the state of emergency. Is that what you, what you were saying about the... For a contract situation, Kaylee? Yeah. So and, what, al um, and also yeah. for, and also for like, forgiveness and if, if somebody was having a hard time paying taxes, um, are we kind of just waiting on the state to see what happens? So the, uh, the answer with the information at hand is uh, we, we have and we will continue to offer uh, contract arrangements for anybody who needs additional time. Uh, the way that it works now is for the situations like this, uh, right out of the gates, there is an 8% penalty. And then for each, for the first three months, there would be an additional 1%. And then it's a one and a half percent per month after that. So um, we're, with the statutes, the way that they are written now, we would enter into a contract. And uh, generally the way these work is it's about a six month period and payments uh, either are kicking in in June or July. And then by December of that given uh, you know, following, uh, most folks have these contracts closed out. So um, the uh, barring the state legislature making an adjustment on the penalty and the interest, the town's not in a position to waive those. We can't do that legally. We can offer the contract, but we cannot waive the fees. Okay, thanks for explaining, Sean. The town yeah. manager's office makes a determination on the contracts. So uh, the way I would say it is, um, what I thought about is, look, we could set this up that if an individual wants to enter into a contract, they will email us or send us a letter. And then, yeah, you know, if we could have this penalty uh, interest issue addressed, then what we would say to them is plan to come in the first week of June and then we'll get the arrangements in order. So we give ourselves time after the stay at home and we get settled in. And I'm just going to say this, I don't want to put Amanda or Casey or myself where we're into a position where all of a sudden we're having to deal with a lot of people, no disrespect intended, but we have to think about, you know, May 15th doesn't mean the social distancing is going to end. It's going to continue. That's all I have to say. Any more, any more discussion on the motion on the table to add direction to, uh, reach out to the league expressing Hardwick support for these two measures. Okay, hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 That's everyone, so motion passes unanimously. So Sean, if you could reach out to the league supporting the, you know, indicating Hardwick support for those two efforts, that'd be great. Yeah, I will do that. And uh, thank you all very much. These are, there's some pretty complicated stuff going on here. So we're doing our best. I, you know, I hope, I, I feel like we're, we're keeping up to the best of our ability in support of our community members. So I appreciate the board support here. Hey, Sean. Go ahead, Lucian. Yeah, I had a, um, I had a question that someone brought to me about what the road crew is allowed to do. They, I didn't get the details on it, but they're saying this has, has um, limited what road crews are allowed to do. And yeah, so do you have any information on that, or is that something that's still just working? It's constantly changing, isn't it? Yeah, so uh, I can briefly comment on this. We, um, uh, we are our road crew, our police department, our water and our wastewater are considered uh, essential services. But there was an update that went out from the Agency of Commerce and Community Development uh, the first, uh, let's see, Tuesday, uh, two days back. And it, it basically clouded the waters a little bit. And uh, the end point is this, uh, operations such as grading and uh, maintenance coming off winter, uh, things that are essential for the transportation network, um, activities like this are now considered essential. So we can continue to work on things like this. Uh, I'll give you some examples of action items that we can't be doing. You know, oftentimes we're, we're working on um, we may be doing some trash pickup on the side of the road. We might be starting a new ditch project. Uh, we might be uh, trying to do some, um, you know, I don't know, there's just various activities that we're into kind of between these seasons. 
we have the clarification now that we can keep on some essential tasks and we're meeting the updated classification from the uh, Agency of Commerce and Community Development. I did reach out because I had some pretty significant concerns. The updated guidance that was provided to municipalities didn't match up with the initial uh, stay at home, stay safe order that the governor had issued. So I, I reached out to the league about this and I reached out to the sec, the uh, deputy secretary of the agency of community of agency of uh, commerce and community development, Ted Brady and said, look, here's, here's how we're looking at this. And we have to do some of these things to keep the ball rolling is how we kind of paraphrased. So uh, I think we're in an okay position right now. Tom and I, for the past two weeks, have been trying to evaluate, look, we got to do our part to protect our employees that are in the field. This is in reference to the highway department, of course. And then, but we also have, there are some projects that we do consider essential that we can keep going on. So we're going to work to, we're going week to week and we are comfortable with how we are going about the process. I'll give you an example of something that wouldn't be allowed. You know, generally we're starting up sweeping activities in the first part of May. We're not going to do our street sweeping activities. You know, we're going to wait until we get off the stay at home. So, you know, there's an example of something that is it really needed? That's what it comes down to. Is it really needed? Okay, thanks. Any other questions? All right, so we're ready to move along. Um, road foreman report is next. And I'm sleeping. <laughs> Waking you up, Tom. <laughs> Yeah, like Sean, Sean was just saying, uh, uh, we, we've we been dealing with this. I check in with Sean just about every day on this stuff. And this stuff's been throwing us a loop every now and then. Um, but anyways, uh, what we've been trying to do, uh, we got two culverts that kind of failed on us that we got a temporary fix on. Uh, one's on West Hill and the other one's up on Tucker Brook. Uh, we spent a few days back down on the Patton's property, uh, cleaning up some more garbage down there. We ended up on off uh, two more dumpsters full down there. Uh, we just about got everything all cleaned up down there. Some, uh, I think we still got like a little bit of metal left in that big long box trailer down there. Ain't quite sure what to do with that yet, but we'll deal with it when the time comes, I guess. Uh, road grading's been actually pretty good, good this week. Uh, we think we got the whole end of Macville area done, which includes the Hopkins Hills side and, and uh, Macville Carry Road that side. Uh, the guys went up towards uh, Dimmick Road today and got some of the side roads up there, like Bill Hazen, uh, Mountain View, and Ward Hill. Um, then they regraded, I think, again, up West Hill and down through Tucker Brook a little bit. And tomorrow, uh, we'll see if we can't go uh, finish up, uh, like, uh, Hardick Farms, Montgomery, and over towards that end. And then that would leave us back towards Bridgman and over towards Bunker Hill again. So... Uh, we're actually starting our second uh, round of grading right now. Uh, things are actually coming along pretty good for the dirt part anyway, so there's still some frost coming out in uh, some of the wooded areas still, but all in all, the roads are actually looking pretty good. Uh, tentatively, uh, uh, Pike for asphalt, uh, they got it set for maybe they might be opening up the beginning of May so we can get some hot mix and start patching some of the holes downtown. Uh, if you didn't know, uh, we had a uh, vehicle up in East Hardwick go through the guardrails at the bridge. Uh, so we got a whole section up there that needs to be repaired. But because of the stay at home thing, uh, we did get a price and we are all set up to get those uh, fixed. But of course, they're not going to be starting up repairing anything until, well, right now is May 15th. Uh, same thing with the catch basin that's across from there. I know that one's, you know, needs repair too, but there again, concrete trucks, we, we need them on the road so we can fix and repair that. So we're kind of in a limbo on some, some of the things that need, need to be done, but, uh, we're, we're trying to keep up the best we can. So. Yeah, Tom, I just want to say thank you guys for being so quick on that East Hardwick accident. I live right up the road and um, the concrete barriers are a really good fix for right now. Yeah, uh, we got the blinking lights up there too. Hopefully they'll stay there. Uh, we did have a cone on the other side by the catch basins, but they usually end up in the river. So that's why there's a grade stake there now. 
Yeah. Wow. That was a stolen right. truck. It was a stolen truck too. Yep. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. So the chances of uh, billing back to the person who stole the truck for repairs are probably slim to none. Well, actually, uh, Aaron uh, gave me an update on that. We talked about that issue, and he said actually uh, we we could probably put in a claim with the individual who is the carrier for the stolen vehicle, and it's it's a hold harmless situation on him. So there is a potential we might get a reimbursement, but that's as much as I know right now. Hmm. Yeah, the repairs up there, Eric, they're they're probably going to be somewhere around twenty seven hundred, about thirty two hundred dollars, somewhere around that range to get it all repaired. And that's basically because the person took out the guardrail, right? Yes. Yeah, they're completely demolished. Yeah. Wow. Well, so it goes. Yep. All right. Any any uh, questions for Tom from anybody? Well, thanks, Tom. Hey, no problem. All right. So next up is um, Chief Cochran with the uh, police department report to Aaron, you think you're with us? I'm with you. All right. I've got to say it is kind of nice to be able to eat supper while you're, while, while we're at this meeting, so. <laughs> oh, you have supper at your house? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right over after, I'll be right you're over right. after. Yeah, we'll be rolling down the hill. Actually, there. It was actually some venison too, so Sean probably is looking, looking for some of that. <laughs> Oh, well, too, Aaron, yeah. I was just thinking, Aaron, a quick fix for your uh, roof up there. I mean, uh, they do make flex seal, so that'd be a cheap uh, Yeah, it, I, it would probably go through a few cans, but it might work. <laughs> the, uh, as Sean said, the, uh, the public safety building, we've known that for a few years and tried to put money in. Um, but, but we don't know cost yet or anything. I did come in uh, Wednesday, I think it was Wednesday morning after that big storm and found um, quite a puddle of water uh, in my office in particular. So, um, so we know that we've been losing shingles. We knew it needed to be replaced. Uh, we we're hoping to be able to get enough money in there into the budget to do it prior to needing it. Um, at this point, it, it needs to be done. So we're going to have to look at, you know, we've been looking at what we have in there and we'll be looking at the, you know, the cost uh, needed, et cetera. Uh, to get that done. So um, it's not an unexpected repair necessarily. Uh, we knew it was coming, but um, we'll try to try to see where we're at with that, as Sean said. Um, other than that, the uh, still pretty much business is normal for us. Um, my officers are all healthy, uh, knock on wood. So we're uh, doing our best to stay there. We're, we're in good shape with uh, personal protective stuff. We as I had told you before, we had somebody donate um, over 100 masks for us, and uh, so we're we're in good shape. Um, you know, we have gloves, we have goggles, we have masks if we need them, and uh, the uh, the officers are using those as appropriate. Uh, so we're you know we're in good shape there. And uh, as Tom had said, calls are still pretty normal. Um, there is still traffic out there, so there are still traffic crashes. Um, criminals are still out there, so there's still criminal activity. So, um, you know, we're working, working as normal and and going through all that. Other than that, that that's that's what I have for a report. Great, thank you, Aaron. Does anybody have questions for Aaron? Okay. Hearing none. Just, uh, Eric, just uh, want to say thank you to the chief and uh, the crew. Um, you know, these, they're keeping right to it. And, uh, you know, obviously we do service here at Hardwick, but also in uh, Greensboro. So I appreciate it. Uh, we, just like Tom noted, you know, we, the chief and I are checking in, you know, multiple times a day and just, you know, what are you getting for information? What do you, you know, what do you need for resources and everything? Okay. So just to, uh, you know, as I've already said in my report, I appreciate the efforts of town employees and uh, the chief and all his crew. So thank you. Yeah, definitely. I'll echo that for, for the 
police and the road crew and actually everyone else. Glad to have water and sewer and I'm glad to have people paying the bills. And <laughs> well, we're, we've made some significant adjustments, obviously, for, uh, you know, doing some work at home stuff. And that that's it's hard to adapt to that sometimes, but everybody yeah. is doing a good job in keeping up as best we are able. So it's the whole crew uh, really working hard to get the job done. Yeah, good. Um, all right, so next up is uh, item one, is select board to review the CUD board applicant or application and decide an appointment. So we have uh, the, um, the CUD, uh, lost my, hang on, um, the communication union district, we have one letter of interest from Laura Berkman, who I believe is on our Zoom call here. And so, um, Eric, I, I need just... to step away. Eric, I need to step away just for a minute so I can get to the part of my house that has cell signal so I can tell Casey we got her coming up in a minute. So I'll be right back. She, she logged in. Casey's on board. Yeah, she was. I don't see her now. Yeah, I'll go, go ahead find and her. Just, I'll, I'll ping her. Yeah, go ping her. Um, Laura, it looks like you're here. Do you want to yes, say here. hello? Hi, everyone. I'm Laura. I'm from the CUD, and uh, very nice to meet everybody. So, Laura, you're interested in, in um, representing Hardwick on the CUD board? Yes, that's correct. Good. And, yep, and in your yeah. letter, it's a... I what beg was? your pardon? Why? Harley's been my Harley's been my home for twenty years, and uh, I'm also a state uh, state delegate for the uh, the uh, Democratic Caucus, representing Hardwick. Um, um, I I started in Hardwick as a as a regular person, and I built my way up from from uh, from from town delegate to county delegate to state delegate uh, from from town of Hardwick. I love Hardwick. Um, I also used to work at the Hardwick Criminal Justice Center as a as a, a volunteer for the panels and they just recently closed up the Hardwick Justice Center so they do it at, a, uh, at a, a St. Johnsbury now. Um, I've done a lot of things for Hardwick so uh, so when they said they wanted, were doing this um, a union of, of districts uh, uh, for, and they included Harwick in it, I wanted to be the first one on, on board. Anybody else have uh, questions for Laura? Yeah, can, uh, can you tell me what kind of technical experience you have as far as internet or anything like that? Well, I've been- Not like that, by the way. Sure. So, um, I'm sorry, yeah. go ahead. Well, I was just going to suggest that, Doug, you could also reach out to Laura separately after yeah. if you want. I would definitely like to do that. Um, sure. I'm just curious. Yeah. Sure. yeah. That's no problem. Sure. Uh, uh, I can put my email in the, um, in the chat if there's no chat. Uh, I, so in your in your letter of interest, you, yes. you said that you have uh, had a computer, uh, studied some computer stuff. Uh, yeah, or... I, I took uh, well at least one year of IT in college before I changed the uh, uh, majors, and uh, I had a few few college. I had a few courses on IT. Uh, besides, I've been with computers since they first came out in home. Uh, I, I watched the internet become the internet, and um, I've always had the new fangled things that came out. Um, I took a few college courses, like I said, and so I'm not I'm not I'm not a guru when it comes to the computer and the internet, but I know I know quite a. Few Quite a few things about the internet and the, and the, uh, and computers. I know my way around them. Uh, board members, do you have any more questions? Laura, I just want to say thank you. This is Kaylee Kane for 
submitting your letter, um, it seems like it's a pretty big task. Um, and there are all kinds of towns that have come to work on this. And I think now, especially during this crisis, it's clear that we need better internet in the Northeast Kingdom um, to support our, our communities. I just have a really quick question. Um, I'm just wondering if you if you've connected with the Northeast Kingdom Collaborative at all to kind of see where the project is um, with all of the changes that are happening, um, and and if you've um, oh sorry, just <laughs> distracted by something at home, um, but if you've been able to connect with them at all about the status of the project. Um, we, I just left a meeting from them just as I came into this one and everything still go. Um, they're in the process of getting grants and um, different uh, uh, things together and um, they're just doing a waiting game right now. Right now they're forming their committees. And um, they're for, they're forming their their clerks and their treasurers and stuff like that. We're getting everything together right now and forming form we're forming right now, and um, we're, we're getting things together right now. And once we're once we're complete, we're going to be a really good broadband connection for the Northeast Kingdom. We're going to reach places that are are reachable. We're going to make sure that that everybody has a broadband connection in the Northeast Kingdom. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. More questions for Laura from the board? Does anybody feel moved to make a motion? Eric, could we kind of just go over what the, um, the last time we talked about this, they were still figuring out the job description. Um, is there, Sean, do we have more language about, I know Casey sent out information from the collaborative about kind of what the motion should um, sound like. Do we have that to work off of? Sorry, uh, I do not have that right in front of me, but I think Casey is maybe digging right now. Casey, do by any chance you have, I don't have access to that info, sorry. You're on mute, Casey. Give me just a moment, I'll get that. Thank you. Did we, we needed special language to um, appoint someone to the CUD board? That's what you're remembering, Kaylee? I was just looking up the board member description, which yeah. I just found from the, um, from Casey. So I was just looking kind of for that language to use oh, yeah. the motion. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, just that particular one. Um, Yes. Um, yeah, it was a particular, um, yeah, I'm going to stick this in the folder here so you can look at this because, yeah, it's. Would you like me, Eric, I have it right here. I can oh, you um, have it? create a motion based on the language. Does that sound good to everybody? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds good to me. So I move that we appoint Laura Berkman to serve as the Hardwick representative on the Northeast Kingdom Community Broadband CUD, which stands for Community Broadband uh, Communications Union District. Um, as a member, she would serve for a one year term and be responsible for acting on behalf of the town in the shaping of the community broadband network in the Northeast Kingdom. So we have a motion. I'll second that. There we go. Second. So, and yeah, great. So we have motion from Kaylee, second from Sherry. Any more discussion? Yeah, I guess I just had one thing. I was wondering um, 
see if you could come and update us fairly frequently on what's going on. I don't know how do you know how often the meetings are? I don't know how often the meetings are, but I'm sure Casey could maybe send me an email. No, and then I think they're going to be once a month. Is my understanding? I think they're just going to be once a month. Okay. So maybe so, quarter, quarterly updates or something would be good. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Sure. Do you I think it would be that. all right with with you, Laura, to come to a select board meeting like once a quarter? Sure, that would be no problem. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, there is language about this in the um, in the board member description. I'm wondering, could we have Laura essentially sign a what the um, qualifications and expectations are highlighted in the, in the letter from the collaborative? So it says provide verbal update on the status of the network at minimum once annually via town meeting or other public hearing act as primary liaison between town leadership. Um, it's all fairly flushed out. Could we kind of include that in the agreement? Sure. 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 I like that idea. Um, Laura, would you like me to email you the board member description? Would that be helpful? Yes, that would. Sure, I'll do that right now, actually. And it basically talks about what Kaylee was just talking about, um, the duties and qualifications and such. So I will do that right now. All right, so that sounds good. Um, and we have a motion and a second. Do we have any more discussion? So, all in favor of appointing Laura Berkman as the Hardwick representative to the Northeast Kingdom um, Communications Union District, please say aye. 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 That's everyone, right? On any opposed? Okay. So, motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Laura, for um, for your interest and and uh, for serving Hardwick on this board. Hey, no problem. My pleasure. Great. All right, and uh, thank you, Casey, for following up with the uh, email on the responsibilities. Sure, it's all set. I just sent it. Nice. Okay. Um, so next up is business manager Casey Rowell to provide quarterly budget update. Okay. And, um, Do you do you want to share share the overview on the screen? Maybe do you have the power to do that? Um, I think Leaf has to set up screen sharing with me. Um, or Casey, you yes? you can do it. If I make you a co-host, you should be able to share your screen. So I'll make you a co-host right now. Okay. And then see if you have that option. Uh, it should be in the maybe bottom center of your screen. Okay. Let me see what I can. You all realize we're testing the capability of the internet system right now, coming off that CUD discussion. <laughs> yeah. Share screen. Okay. Um, I do see that button. Share screen. Okay. Um, screen share. And then I just need to open up what I want to open, right? Yeah, I think, I think it'll give you an option to share your home whole screen or share an application. Nice. Okay, so is this working now? I see it. Can you, okay, okay. All right, so revenues first. Um, here's my little chart. Um, so I broke it out by department. Um, and I explained here. So we, at this point, it shows actual taxes. That's more what's been billed, not necessarily what's been received. Um, our budget is what portion of the total taxes collected would belong to the town after we pay the school. Um, office revenues, 
uh, at this point, we should be around 75%. So we're a little high on office revenues. That basically has to do with the recordings, the $5 per page increase in recordings that we didn't know about when we budgeted last year. Um, highway revenues are on track. We'll get one more quarterly payment from the state for our state aid. Police revenues are on track. Other grant revenue, we didn't have a lot budgeted. Um, and then our miscellaneous revenue is right about there as well. Um, just kind of talking about um, what we have left to collect in taxes. Um, right, the last check with the town clerk was we have 2.8 million left to collect by May 10th. Um, we look, actually, I wanna talk a little bit about scenarios. Sean and I kind of talked about, you know, in the environment we're in, we do expect additional delinquency. So I've looked at some things. Um, as I said, we have 2.8 million left to collect. We talked about, you know, how much money we get in from escrow companies. And what I did find out is that typically between mid-April and May 10th, we get in around 400,000 from escrow companies. So we feel confident we can count on that. Um, and so that leaves about 2.4 million. We looked at last year's delinquency rate, which uh, May 10th or May 11th, it was around 220,000. We, we figured that if that doubles and goes to you know closer to 500,000, if our delinquency rate doubles, we should still get in about 2.3 of the 2.8. We owe the Casey, about Casey. This yes. is Sean. I did describe in the manager's report that we have okay. a you know a big bill due to the uh, school system. So I gave a little bit of a narrative on that, just so you're advised. And okay. what I did offer up as a part of the town manager's report was, uh, you know, folks are in a position to pay. Just you know, go ahead and please pay. And then there was a lot of detail in regards to what our options are moving forward. But you can check the minutes on that at a later time. Okay. Okay. So you kind of got the gist of that then. Um, is that we're kind of thinking, you know, if the delinquency rate doubles, we should, we'll be about 500,000 short of what we have left to collect, but we'll be close to what we need to pay the school, ultimately. Any questions about revenue? Nope. Okay, let's move on to expenses. Um, so, oh, sorry. Oh, you closed. Um, okay, so ideally we would be around 75% overall. So looking down here, we're at 77.52. Um, I will remind you that all of our BLCT insurances are paid through June 30th. So if you factor that in, we're in pretty good shape in terms of where we should be at this point. Um, some of these categories where there are 193, we either have just a little bit more to pay or those appropriations have been paid already. Um, a lot of the line items have been paid already. Um, trails and rec are good. Fire department, police, 65%, 59%. Um, buildings are um, where they should be. Other payroll, that will go up when we make our second payment to all the stipend employees at the end of the fiscal year and offices on target. So, um, I mean, highways at 80%, but um, really not too bad overall. And we've got several expenses salt, for instance, that we won't have any additional expenses and we had our winter sand and all of that. So really not too bad considering. Questions about any of this? I think it's I think it's typical to see highway well over the seventy five percent at the at this point, right? Because right, most because of their expenses through the winter. Ahead. Yes. Yeah, they do a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. it's yeah. So that to me looks um, looks really good. So yeah, that's what I got. And I, yeah, I look through the, thank you for the notes and the detailed um, mm -hmm. budget summary that, that's in our folder too, because that's, those are helpful. Mm -hmm. Did you, do you want to talk any at all about water and sewer? I did have, could you just, 
um, explain where we are in the water and sewer year? Sure. So at this point, um, we've billed our third quarter. We've probably received a little bit of that, but mostly not. So um, we are lower than anticipated in the base revenue, but higher than we expected in the usage at this point oh. in time. So I did have a question looking at those um, figures. Uh, it looked like we're roughly 60% of budget on the base revenues, mm -hmm. um, I think both water and sewer, but isn't that about you, what you would expect, thinking that we don't have the third quarter payments in? Well, I, yes, that is true, yes, yeah. So I guess that, yes, because essentially we would be around 50 because we don't have the third quarter so um yes you know what you're absolutely right i was thinking 75 but because we haven't received a lot of the third quarter we should be around 50 so we really are okay there right so so it's and it, the only reason it's well probably the reason it's over 50 percent is because some people may have paid their third quarter bills already correct yeah those i mean not a lot but i know um but we, Maybe we would keep some in the like la the end of last week, like yeah. within that first week or so of billing, but probably not a lot. So I don't know though. I think uh, this is Sean. I think uh, Alberta was indicating to me that it's been you know there have been a, a good number of those coming in, but I don't know what that equates to to dollar volume. Because on the when I ran this on the thirteenth, it would have only been not quite ten days after that billing, so it, I don't think it would have been that many people that paid that quickly, but. Right, so. But ultimately, we only really need to be at 50 because we're right. Yeah. So, so, we're, so we're in good shape. Yes. Great. Yeah. That's so. good to see. So uh, this is Sean. Um, what we're going to do is um, we're going to have to see where we close out this third quarter. And then we'll, uh, we'll evaluate, you know, what, what we have been doing, as you're all aware, is this last couple of years, we've been doing a yearly review because we're only in the second year of our new rate structure. So we'll have to see how this third closes out and then we will figure out our next steps. So that, there's nothing more I can offer other than we've got to see where the third quarter closes. But unfortunately, we're, we're about a And I am already, already working on... Yeah, I am already working on water and sewer budget, at least starting the expense piece of it. I just started this week, so that'll be coming up. The probably the first meeting in June, I would have the draft of that because then we'll have a lot more data to work with. Yeah. Um, Sean, last year, in case for anybody who remembers, last year I thought we were, um, we had the discussion about rates after. I thought we had, didn't we have fourth quarter or not? Yes. We did have the full year last year. And we did that purposely because it would have been the first full year with all the meters that we Can had. we do that again or was that cutting it? Too yes. I, I got ahead of myself, Eric. What I should have said is we'll, ha we'll see where we're at on our third quarter just to check year to date. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we will mirror last year's pattern, which was we met after we met in the next fiscal year. So we met in the next fiscal year sometime after July 1st is my point. Yeah, we would, you know, we evaluate what we think will be the rate structure. It comes, um, it's in the middle of that first quarter of the new yeah. water budget year, wastewater budget year. Yeah. So the point is this, you know, whatever that rate is, it basically becomes retroactive back to July 1 for that 90 day period. So that we will follow that same process. Thanks for clarification there. Okay, just wanted to talk through it. Thank you. So um, I feel like I've been hogging this conversation. Select board. Other people, what else do you have? Any other questions? No, oh, that just all sounds like we're going into this in good shape to me. So thank you, Casey. Okay, I'm gonna shut off my screen now. Just uh, let me offer this. I know that we've seen some news about other communities, um, you know, having to make some pretty significant adjustments. But uh, with the good budgeting processes we have, and also I think there's some extenuating circumstances why some of these other communities have had to make adjustments. And in particular, I'm talking about employee adjustments. 
Uh, some of these communities have a local option tax. So obviously that has hit them really hard because there's not a lot of activity happening in their communities. Burlington and Montpelier are the examples. In addition, they have other, other types of services. Uh, so let me just hone in on this. Uh, you know, parking meter enforcement as an example. Well, we don't do that. So, uh, you know, unfortunately in these other communities, because they are saying now we're not going to enforce our parking bans, they've taken the tact to back, you know, go a different direction. So we're, we're okay where we are right now. We don't have to make significant adjustments. We got to keep an eye on it moving forward. So that's just what I want to project to everybody. Yeah, it's a good reminder. Thank you. Um, so last call on questions on the budget update for Casey. Select board. Oh no. No. Everybody's shaking their head. Except for Kaylee, who only appears as a name. I'm Kaylee. just trying to figure out some technical things, but it looks great, Casey. Thank you. <laughs> Good. All right. So um, next, we adjusted our agenda since we have you, Casey, to um, have item number three be uh, an update on the revolving loan fund information that you gathered from the state. And so if you if you wouldn't mind giving us a little update on what you learned about that, that'd be great. Sure. Um, so I participated in a conference call today with ACCD and um, many other towns. A little while ago, they basically contacted everybody that had a revolving loan fund to sort of say, what's your balance? What they came up with was that there's about $10 million cumulatively among all the towns in the state that have these types of funds. And what they want to do is this, this is the draft, of course, and so they want to get feedback, but this would be called Restart Vermont Main Street Loan and Grant Program. So essentially, um, the quick and dirty is that it would be um, loan amounts up to 25000 with 20 of it being a loan, 5000 being a grant. Um, they'd like to see deferred principal and interest for six months, a five-year 1% loan with no fees. The way that it would really work is, and that it would have simple underwriting criteria. Um, ACCD would basically have a centralized lending application. They would do the underwriting, and then they would hand off to a municipality if the borrower was within your region. Now I say region because it doesn't necessarily mean that the borrower would be in your town, but in your region. Um, it doesn't mean you have to say yes. Um, they kind of just want to use this community pool. And the idea is basically to get Vermont like to recover, to restart. It's not a loan design to get people through this time. It's to restart and get them going after. Um, it kind of outlines that it could be used for payroll, tax payments, rent, mortgage, inventory, any outstanding balance to vendors um, that, um, what else would it be? They would have, as I said, simple underwriting criteria and they would kind of handle all of that and then it would come to the town to say, do, you know, is this something you want to fund? You can accept or reject. At this point, what they're looking for from us is, is this something we'd want to get on board with? One what of the questions, oh, go ahead. What would we be accepting or rejecting? Do they want, do they want us to pool our revolving loan funds with everybody else's so that yes. this is you know, to, a to participate and they would do like a memorandum of understanding um, among everybody that that they want to participate in this. You still have the right- Where does the money come from? It would be our economic development loan fund. From and, our- And so the first thing I said was, yes, correct, was, well, how do you handle the fact that our policy, that's not what this fund is for? And they said that basically on our end, you could just do like an emergency amendment that it's, also to support this because of COVID-19 or something to that effect, because essentially, as you know, we have criteria for what the economic development loan is. So if we wanted to participate in this loan and grant program, then we would have to do some sort of policy adjustment in order to do that. 
guess I don't understand the the advantage of it. I mean, we already have a loan program that's already set up that we could just give out to somebody in town. So I don't understand the advantage for us for, for joining this. Um, well, it could mean that um, the, I, the idea is that it's a community pool. It helps everybody in the state, it makes the whole pool bigger. And, um, you know, there could be people from Hardwick that we may not be able to help, but they could then go to the pool of money and get money. So it could potentially help people in our town, even if, because our fund isn't huge right now. But if we had a couple of applicants that wanted 25,000, we don't have enough funds to fund them. So they could go to the pool of money. So it, st it could still benefit hardwood people. Hard or it could be the other way around. If, if, if another town, our money could just go to another town and we could just lose it also, right? True. I mean, yes, there, that's the other thing is, you know, they, there's some level of risk. These are unsecured loans. Um, and the other piece is that, they said, you know, it might it might end up being that the same application goes to two different organizations because you might have one town where they can use some for grant and one has to be a loan. So you could have application where we say, okay, well, we can fund $20,000 loan. This town can get $5,000 grant. So it's actually split between two towns. Um, and so the, the grant money would also come out of ours. So then that wouldn't, so we, we would lose that 5000 Not necessarily. You we could say no we don't want to do grant we only want to do loan and so then they would need to get the five thousand from a different town but accd is administering it they're also putting in hopefully they're looking to put in um, a few hundred thousand dollars plus admin costs and they're gonna you know come up with that money and so what they really want is just to see what towns are interested in, in coming on board and being a part of this um, community pool of money to help to help people. Casey, I read through your two page description of this. Thank it's you. From the Google Drive. Yeah, I just put that in there late this afternoon, but that was the draft from from Ted Brady at ACCD. So these these are my questions. Who okay. is ACCD? This is Agency another alphabet thing I've never heard of. Oh. I'm sorry, Agency of Commerce and Community Development. Under, is, is that a state agency? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. Under the governor. And what is CDBG? Community Development Block Grant. Well done. And where does that come out of? That is also um, out of their office as well. Um, but that's federal to... money originally. Right. Um, yeah. I'm drawing a BCDP uses CDBG yeah. grants. That's an, not, I don't know those Vermont, are... community, Vermont Community Development Program, okay. which is where we got the large grant for Yellow Barn. Right. And they use the Community Development Block Grant money from the feds to fund that. So on these loans, when people pay interest, who gets the interest? We do, if we were, if we had the loan. If it's our money, then we get the interest that comes from it. Correct, we would get the interest on the loans that we choose to fund, if you choose to fund loans. Feds, of course, have no interest. So it's like, a, um, again, that was just a draft, but it looked like they said 1% interest, no fees. Maximum five years, 1% no fees. Normal interest rate is Fed funds, maybe minus one, prime, mi prime minus one, I think. Mm -hmm. I'd have to look it up. I think it's prime minus one. Oh, okay. And do you have any idea roughly what that is at this time? Right now, it's probably well, maybe three, three, two, two or three percent, maybe. I bet it's even less. Yeah, except all the existing loans, it's a fixed rate loan. So whatever prime minus one is at the time of your closing, that's the right. rate. So we have loans in our portfolio that may be paying four or 5% because of when they close on the loan, but that's fixed for the entire time. I, I lost my connection for a little bit, my apologies. Um, I Everybody, I think the Restart Vermont Main Street Loan and Grant Program references in the Google Drive, if I'm not mistaken, so everybody yeah. can look at that. And right. then uh, I don't know if you guys hit this or not, but just maybe another scenario is allocate just some portion. You don't have to commit everything we have left in our fund. Maybe that's another strategy here. 
why I'm suggesting this is, you know, VCDP is and has offered uh, grant support to our community in the past. So, you know, if we can be ball players, I think that's a positive thing, as long as it doesn't create a penalty situation for the fund and for the town. So Casey, what you um, added to the Google Drive today, I looked at that too, super informative. Um, it's not, you know, like a con detailed contract or anything that the town would enter into. So at this point, are, are, are we just looking for an indication of our willingness and later Correct. the details? They want, they want feedback. So if you have questions or concerns, they're looking for feedback by next Wednesday. I have to just email back. Um, so either feedback and sort of, are you interested? Is this something you think you are going to want to get on board with? That's and really what they want to know if you have questions or concerns. So I'm not totally sure I'm understanding, so I'm going to run, run this by you. So if, so somebody, let's say somebody wants to, to use this program, they apply, ACCD is doing the, they're going to do the administrative stuff for the application and whatever, mm -hmm. but um, this is a business that's in Hardwick or in our region, so let's say, and so they've applied through ACCD. ACCD determines it comes like Hardwick is the regional resource. Yeah. So would we only be loaning out like the amount of money that we have in our in our existing revolving right. loan? Correct. We can only commit to what we have available. And the, and the, the money that they, that ACCD is talking about putting in another couple hundred thousand, is that they're going to loan that out directly or how does that kind of work? They didn't make that clear. They just said they are planning on putting in a few hundred thousand dollars plus admin cost. I think that my assumption would be that it's just going into the entire pool of money. Meaning and then because where they're located, they probably could do anybody throughout the state versus being limited regionally. And did they, I'm just wondering, so like in our case, if potentially two of these loans would use up everything we have, mm -hmm. right? So let's say two of them come through this, either through our normal channels or through this new um, program, if we joined it, and our fund is pretty much, um, doesn't have anything left to loan out or not much. Uh, is there still opportunity for people from Hardwick to apply through this program and potentially still get funded through some other means? Or? I would say yes, I would say yes, depending on yeah. what, what towns regionally are gonna participate in the pool of money. What it indicates on page two of the guidance is approved applications will be forwarded to the geographically appropriate fund for consideration. You know, maybe there's a handful of funds in our area. You know, if we were, you know, if it caused a, a cash flow issue for our fund, there's maybe another one adjacent. Just one other point here, the receiving loan fund has the right to accept or reject an application. Obviously just some draft guidance at this phase. Correct. So region, Casey. Who is in our region? They didn't specify specifically. I would say it's kind of county related, but um, I remember the example, I think Walden, Green, like, I don't know what the, the radius would be, but kind of Walden, Greensboro, Woodbury, anybody kind of in a surrounding town. And wouldn't they need to also have economic development loan funds already? Or is this a way Our, for those? No, 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 no. Um, no, it could be anybody. They don't have to have an existing. So, um, yeah, but like St. Johnsbury has one of uh, an economic loan, uh, economic development loan fund like ours. Mm -hmm. So potentially they would be pooling with us and then anybody else in the Northeast Kingdom or in the area could be pooling, but places like I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out whether somehow it benefits us to because it would extend what we don't really have very much of right now or whether it would pinch us even more. That's what I'm trying to figure out. 
Um, well, not to be a question, I, we didn't really talk about that in the call. Um, it was sort of an overview and what they had said, I'm just looking at my notes here, um, was that it would just be, they kind of referred to it as regional. So could make loans yeah. in, your, in your region. Um, Can like I it. offer, sorry. Go ahead, Go ahead Sherry. It's all right. I don't. I don't really know. <laughs> I think um, it sounds like like we have a bunch of questions, and um, I, I think a, a reasonable response is we're interested in learning more okay. as, yeah. as this it gets developed. Uh, here's a question. This is Doug from the Gazette. Um, is this basically going to be transferring what we have left in our fund to some larger pool in some other place? Control over that. That is the well. So it's it's only it would only um, we would only give out money if we decided to loan. And the idea is it's when they say pooling money, it doesn't mean we're gonna put it all in in the beginning. Like we're not they're not going around to the towns and gathering up ten million dollars. It's just they're going around to see who has what to work with. And they say, okay, now we have all of these towns that could potentially put in money. And so the only time we really go out is if we funded. Yeah. This, this is one of our questions, right? This is one of the questions. <laughs> Start getting our questions together. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. one of my questions is that if we, if we get involved and we get some some really good loan applications and we say yes that money is is committed for five years well if somebody comes along in year two and wants to start a business and is looking for the town to help with the economic development loan have we got a way to to get stuff you know to get some money that we could lend that or have we committed that mm -hmm. in a way that that shuts off the development potentially of new businesses in hardwood or or does it um you know taking the other view is it keeping existing businesses going yeah what if we are doing this separating it to two different funds and that way we can have fine synergies with other towns to make money by sharing resources with other towns. But if we're just committing everything, that's the question. Yeah, I would also just add what they had said. So, the last Eric, could I offer one other comment? I think Kaylee's talking, but I can't quite hear her. Yeah, can you guys hear me? Nope, not really. Not well. Okay, I'm on a different computer, so is that better? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, we had some technical difficulties. These are big surprise, surprise. Um, I just wanted to really quickly say, I think, Eric, to your point earlier, um, currently, for our last life we're meeting, what we have in our loan fund is pretty minimal. Um, so if somebody was to ask for $20,000, we wouldn't be able to offer more than two businesses that amount of money. So in my view, this could only help us potentially leverage other funds in the district or in the region to support other businesses um, and potentially help us figure out ways that we can we can boost that that fund or um, support businesses in creative ways. Um, so maybe that's a question to Casey for them is is you know considering how much money we have in that fund, what does that what does that mean? Do we have enough to really be able to be a player in what they're looking for? Um, and then also the other questions that I'll be there for, of course, we're asking, I think are totally relevant. Eric, can I offer something? Yeah, go ahead. The uh, what I was what I was thinking about is I, I would think we would have some flexibility uh, since it's our fund. Uh, my under, my interpretation, my understanding is we're we're agreeing to pool in, but we're uh, you know this would be a question, I guess. Uh, we're assuming we keep control of our fund. This being said, uh, the town, the select board, uh, you know, the town would have the control on maximum amounts and things like this. 
I think there's another positive about this that I'm seeing. Um, obviously, we got to be careful that we have funds available and for the reasons that have been talked about now. But let's not forget, there's a grant component of this. So think about if, you know, a Hardwick business is coming to the table, they're potentially going to get some grant out of this. And that's coming back out of that state money. So I, I see an advantage there if we can work through some of these other logistics issues. Yeah, if, if that's the intention of the state money is to provide the grant aspect. I don't think we need more information. Casey? Um, I don't know as though they indicated that some towns actually have some of their funds that would allow grants. So if you have a $25,000, as they use the example, you might have one town that can give them a $20,000 loan and they can get a $5,000 grant from another town. So it kind of depends on. Okay, hold on. I'm not suggesting that we do a grant from the town economic development loan. When I look at page, uh, when I look at page two uh, of the guidance, it says grants will be made out of the revolved CDBG funding in similar funds across the state. I'm interpreting this to mean the grant component is coming out of the CDBG fund pot of money. Not, I'm not advocating we take grant out of or offer grant from the town of Hardwick. No, I, I didn't fund. Yeah. I don't know. Just for clarification. So, so how about we uh, just keep an eye on this and talk about it? Because it seems like there are some other things that are inevitably going to get worked out. This was just today, no? Correct. This was this sort of preliminary meeting. I mean, I do think they want yeah. to come here kind of quickly, which is why they asked for feedback by next week, but I can share our discussion or questions and, and I'm sure there's going to be a follow-up call probably yeah. at the end of next week, I would guess. I think, um, I mean, personally, I think it's a really interesting idea and um, yeah. it, it creates, you know, a, a higher visibility um, mechanism for, for people to apply through when it, I mean, assuming mm -hmm. they'll have a much better outreach program than we have, for example, for our little loan fund. I think it's also worth remembering that our loan fund was created through a grant, which I think was from the community block grant development, right? I think it was. I believe so, yes. And, um, you know, if this is a way that we can um, collaborate with others and with ACCD who, or who's been really supportive of Hardwick um, in recent years. I mean, I, I think um, I think it would be good for us to participate if if we can. But we we need to learn more, you know, as it unfolds. Mm -hmm. One thing, am I muted? No. One thing that I wonder about is the level of commitment. Are we like committing our money and? We, we, if somebody comes to us in town and wants a loan, can we then loan that loan it out, or are we actually committing to only giving loans through this program? If one no, of I wouldn't say there's that level of a commitment because we can always say no to a request. Yeah, so that's what it says. It's our ultimate mm -hmm. decision. So, um, so if throughout the course of this we don't get any loans, but then we were to get a loan from somebody in town for a true economic development loan and we funded that and then they brought us an application we could we could just simply say we've recently funded we have the funds for this and no we're still in complete control of the fund i think lucian had a little bit more to say i want to hear what he has to say on this so basically basically what we're saying basically what this is is that they're saying that they can come to us with, with a request for for a loan basically if they're an entity from outside of town could come to us with a request for a loan or from inside of town. And somebody from, or inside of town, and people from our town could go to other towns in our region, basically, through, through, the, through this, whatever this alphabet soup is, to, um, to, to get a loan. So, and since there is no, we're not actually giving them our money, and we're not actually committing to, to take any loan, it's, um, it just seems like it adds more flexibility, but it's, there's not really a high level of commitment. I mean, I guess the only thing is that we could potentially give a loan to another town because we have money, and then someone from our town could ask for a loan, and then we wouldn't have the money. It's, I mean, I guess that's just a problem, the, the, the main problem that I would see to it, but otherwise it doesn't seem like a high level of commitment. So. 
So can I jump, jump in really quickly? And maybe Casey, we should just ask some more clarifying questions for our next select board meeting. And to Sherry's point, and also Eric, we're interested in this. Obviously, there are a lot of questions. This also to me seems like a, a stopgap for some of the loss that businesses have been experiencing with the current crisis and shutdowns. So um, this specifically talks about businesses that have been temporarily closed. Talks about um, alterations um, over the past couple months. It, so maybe we just need a lot more clarity in terms of how far back we'll be on the on the hook for funds and the longevity of that um, out of all Lucian's points, but it seems like we don't really have enough information right now to be able to answer those questions. I think they're trying to get a first cut here. So, I mean, some of the things you've all have been talking about now as a first cut, we can get those things back to them next Wednesday. It's not saying in a commitment at this phase. I think Eric said it well. We're, we have a lot of questions. So let's get a few of these framed for them to be thinking about. So we have our, you know, it, what I'm hearing is we want to maintain our local control on this and help people locally. But we also, you know, it, if we can assist and be part of a solution, that's important too. Yeah, I, that's where I'm at. I think that, that we ought to express our interest in participating and we have, and these are our questions. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Everybody, so who, Casey, you're following, you're, you're following this process, is that, okay. So, and all you need from us is this, uh, this the board generally agrees that we we want you to keep pursuing this because we're interested and these are our questions yes and everybody on the board you guys are all good with the board generally agrees we want to keep pursuing this and those are our questions mm -hmm. okay sounds good Fair enough. i think it's kaylee did you say something no. sounds good okay just so you know, Kaylee, you're pretty hard to hear when you're speaking, so. Sorry, I switched from my mom's computer to my dad's, and it's not as good. <laughs> Hers was better. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Moving on. Thank you, Casey. You have what you need from us, right? All right. What about the minutes? Oh, right. You're here. So when we, we didn't um, approve minutes from last time. Good and, catch, Wiz. Yeah, that was good. And because uh, we we're all set, we had a motion and a second, and then um, Lucian said, I'm all, I'm all good as long as, he said, I sent in some updates and as long as they got incorporated, but we weren't sure. Yeah, you they had been changed. Yes, okay. she made a comment about, um, that I had made, I had said Lucian said something, but actually Sherry said it, and there was one other thing. So the the edits that you requested, Lucian, I did make. Okay, great. So, being as how we probably didn't follow protocol, we probably should have voted down that previous motion, but we didn't. We just abandoned it and moved forward. Um, but maybe we could start again with a motion to. Yeah, okay, uh, for Amanda's. Uh, 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 good. What, how do we close that out? Uh, how, how should we list that in the minutes that we kind of dropped it? Well, we tabled it. Okay, just list it as tabled. It was tabled and it's now been picked up off the table and discussed. Okay, okay so, so we move forward with it. So we had a, you mean, so you want to go with the original motion and second? Yeah. All right. Amanda, you still mm -hmm. have the original motion and second? Okay. Thank you. All good then. So um, all in favor of approving the minutes as written from last time, please say aye. 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 All right. That's everybody, I think. So unanimous um, approval of minutes. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Casey, for that little, little hiccup we got through. Um, <laughs> All right, so moving on, item four is select board to authorize annual update of the local emergency management plan, the LEMP, um, which is 
while you're looking, I can comment, Eric. It's uh, there were just it's uh, the updated template was put in place last year, so there were a few adjustments, but uh, nothing structurally significantly changed. So we're obligated to do an annual update uh, with select board's authorization. I go forward with our uh, NVDA approval, and then we collaborate with Vermont Emergency Management to get it in place for May first. Yep, I'm just looking at. Um... Uh, so that was in our folder and basically for nearly everything that contacts or the are Sean, Aaron Cochran and Tom Fadden, right? Our primary contacts for, and then we also have um, Casey's in there for some stuff, but um, so mostly it's like who you would expect and it's, so it's, Essentially, and you're saying, Sean, that's the same as last year, just updated. Yeah, te the template is the same. There were a few adjustments here and there. As an example, like the animal control officer, we have a newly assigned animal control officer. Right. Um, I listed, um, I, there were a few uh, phone number and email adjustments. Uh, structurally, there's nothing significant that has changed here. Generally, it's contact information and just yeah. us having a reference, you know, that we know who we got to get to. Uh, right. you know, in the event of something significant. Kind of like what we have right now. All right. Um, could we have a motion uh, to accept the, the LEMP? So moved. Oh, I'm going to give that to Sherry. <laughs> okay. Second. And a second. Okay, so Sherry made a motion to approve the local emergency management plan. Wiz offers a second. Any more discussion about that? All right. All in favor of approving the plan, please say aye. 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 Yay. Thank you, Kaylee. All right. That's everybody. So that was a unanimous uh, pass. And then where are we? So Next I'll go year. forward. I'll go forward and get in that uh, in the pipeline. Thank you all. Awesome. Next board. Next is select board reports. Does anybody have anything to report? I can report from the townhouse. Um, the uh, uh, Vermont Arts Council extended their deadline on the cultural facilities grant application. Mm -hmm. So that is not due now. It was May 1st and um, they extended it to July 27th, which will help because we plan to apply for help with the fire escapes again, and then also potentially a accessibility entrance to the backstage. Oh. Um, we've got an architect that's working with us and we're hopefully gonna be able to, they, the um, division for historic preservation, people aren't allowed to do field visits at all. so. We want to, you know, so at, hopefully after May 15th, we'll be able to start um, actively working on that again and, and get it ready for July 27th for submission. Um, I have heard from the Craftsbury Chamber players that they will not have a season this summer in the oh. townhouse. They're going to, um, they're going to try to preserve themselves and do a uh, uh, virtual uh, performances for their season this year because they can't, of course, they can't make any plans for any of their musicians that travel from elsewhere um, to come. And they didn't know if their audience would be able to, you know, attend. And so they decided that uh, self-preservation was that they would plan to come back to the townhouse in the 2021 season. And um, and they'll get through this season by uh, maybe they'll do a couple of streaming things from the townhouse, but they won't be in there in the same way. So it'll be a creative season of trying to maybe allow people to use that space, you know, like just to do a film uh, streaming thing where they don't have an audience, but they get to have the benefit of the use of the space. I don't know. We'll see. So it's kind of up in the air. Yeah. Uh, Doug from the Gazette, question. Um, last time I was raised about maybe moving the food bank to the townhouse. I, I, Sherry, you want me to comment on that, Sherry? Sure. 
Um, yeah, we had, uh, there was a discussion about uh, potentially using the townhouse space because the uh, Hardwick Area Food Pantry, uh, uh, you know, two weeks back had their busiest week they've ever had. But uh, the townhouse, as it turns out, uh, there's, they're going a different direction. So there are no plans to go forward with using the townhouse at this time, Doug. You mean the food pantry is going a different direction? That's what yeah. I meant to say. Thank you, Sharon. Yeah. Thank you. And they they, Doug, to, to be clear, they, still they uh, could if they decide they want to. Yeah, um, the, the, you know, we offered it up and there was a site visit by the board of directors uh, as well as their uh, part-time director. And uh, they just made a determination. Um, they 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 have some other options. They appreciated that opportunity to be clear. And they're my understanding is they're okay with uh, what they've got for uh, a plan at this phase. Okay, thank you. Any other Sorry. slide? Any other select board reports? Uh, any new business or old business? All right, so um, I, uh, we do have uh, an uh, application for an economic development loan. So um, I need a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Okay, uh, this is Sean. Um, obviously, we're going to go offline with um, Hardwick Community Television, and I sent a separate uh, meeting notice to the select board members and Casey. Does everybody have that at this phase? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Kayla, you good to go? Yes, I am. Thanks, Sean. Okay, so give me you all give me a few minutes once we officially uh, close this, and I'll get that active. It'll be as soon as I can get it up. All right. Thanks, um, everybody. So, wait, 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 wait. so we, I had a motion from Wiz. I seconded. Oh, you seconded. Okay. So all in favor of uh, going into executive session um, for to discuss contracts for development loan, please say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. All right. Guys, everyone, be safe. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank